The land boom of 1886 changed Pasadena from a sleepy agricultural village of citrus groves to a bustling resort town complete with hotels, fancy brick buildings, and newfangled modes of transportation. This change also brought an established and renowned Methodist preacher to the scene, eager to bring God's word to the people of this new metropolis. Pastoring the first Methodist church in Pasadena during the late 1880s, it was here that Phineas F. Brzee established his devotion to bring holiness to the inner city people of Southern California. As Pasadena began to develop and grow, so did Brzee's street ministry, and the Church of the Nazarene was officially founded by Brzee and co-founder Joseph P. Whitney in downtown Los Angeles. As both the church and city grew as neighbors, American society was quickly headed into the 20th century. Faced with the growing ills of the ever-burgeoning population, Brzee saw the need for extensive biblical education and founded Pacific Bible College in 1902, which moved to Pasadena in 1910 and became Pasadena College, one of the numerous Nazarene colleges nationwide. The average cost of real estate $10 per acre. This newfound zeal for Holy Spirit-empowered ministry continued, and First Church of the Nazarene, Pasadena, was established in 1905, moving from a home church holiness movement to a chartered church organization 25 strong. Under the leadership of their first pastor, Dr. J.W. Goodwin, they soon grew out of their rented hall on South Fair Oaks Avenue and purchased their first church building in 1906 on the corner of Mary Street and Fair Oaks Avenue. The church purchased the Raymond Street facility 15 years later in 1921. Its beautiful stained glass windows now grace Lee Chapel in our present facility. Roaring into the 1920s, Pasadena was faced first with extraordinary business growth, only to suffer the setback of the Great Depression in 1929. However, like many of its sister churches, Pasadena First Church maintained a calm and became a center for consistent nourishment, shelter, and encouragement. A vision shared between community, both practically and spiritually. And there was light at the end of the tunnel. A box of Pasadena's own Mrs. C's candy cost only a dollar five. The next 30 years increased both the area's population and church membership. The downtown Civic Center took shape, and Caltech and Jet Propulsion Laboratory became important centers of world-shaking significance during World War II. Pasadena First Church was making its mark in the world as well, supporting missionaries and the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. The post-war baby boom sent Pasadena in yet another direction of growth. Its abundant land toward its eastern borders became bedroom communities of growing families, and the addition of the new 210 freeway, and a booming educational and arts community nearly doubled Pasadena's population in 15 years. The San Gabriel Valley was growing, and Pasadena First Church was growing right along with it. Under the leadership of Dr. Henry Wallen and ending with the 14-year ministry of Dr. J.W. Ellis, First Church embraced the vision for family ministry and acquired a three and a half acre parcel of land in Northeast Pasadena in 1961. The Mountain Street Church, as it was called, soon became pastoral home to Dr. Earl Lee and his wife Hazel in 1966. Trust and obey became the new marching orders and it was to be the beginning of one of the most dynamic ministries in both Nazarene and Pasadena history. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Believe me, that's the message. That's the message because Christmas means joy. I am always fascinated by that, that theme I have in my study. Joy is the most infallible sign of the presence of God. During the 1960s and early 70s, the nation was torn and wounded. The Kennedy and Martin Luther King assassinations marked a violent decade of American history. Vietnam, the Watergate scandal, and the Iran hostage crisis all took their toll on the American psyche. 
The need for a healing vision of Christ's love and provision was at an all-time high. And despite the national decline of mainstream church attendance, Pasadena First Church membership nearly tripled in 10 years. Pasadena was sailing into uncharted waters with its staggering residential and business growth. And as always, First Church was ready, willing, and able to sail alongside. In the late 1970s, with great personal sacrifice, trust, and faith, the First Church family set their sights on a new promised land and made plans to move to a 12-acre site 1.7 miles to the east toward the sunrise. Pastor Lee had noted this plot of land could provide the site for a new church. Pastor Lee felt inspired to gather his congregation together and under an old pepper tree on this land, they did the seemingly impossible thing and knelt in prayer and claimed this land for the Lord. Everyone was amazed at how the Lord performed miracle after miracle to make this land and new buildings available to the church. In the future, when your children ask you why these stones are here, you are to tell them that these stones are a reminder of God's amazing miracle on this day, July 4th, 1976. On July 6, 1980, the congregation marched to its new Sunrise campus and held its first service in the new sanctuary which eventually would see 2,500 souls. Many great events occurred in these new facilities, including the nationally televised account of the way the family and church handled the imprisonment and release of the Lee's son, Gary, who was at the American embassy in Tehran, Iran, when it was stormed and taken over by revolutionaries of that land. Out of this, one of the news reporters from the National Broadcasting Company, Janine Tartaglia Metcalf, personally found the Lord and entered into full-time Christian service as an ordained minister in the Church of the Nazarene. I'll never forget coming to Christ through the wonderful witness of Pastor Lee and Hazel. I was assigned by the Today Show to cover this family because their son was a hostage in Iran. And while I covered them and, and did interviews with them, they interviewed me about where I was with the Lord. There was something about their witness that was so real and genuine that I began to ask myself, what do I do with Jesus? There was something about them that drew me to the love of God. And after 10 months of interviewing this family, I finally came to church. I remember standing there in the balcony one Sunday morning, it was January 18, 1981. That morning with all these reporters in the balcony, I sensed that God was calling me. And in the middle of all those reporters, I put down my notebook and I stood up and I received Jesus Christ into my heart. My life has never been the same. The moment I came into Pasadena First Church, there was something about the love and the safety there that I could be who I really am. The Cassettes for Christ ministry was born. These cassettes of the weekly worship services not only ministered to Pasadena folks, but began to reach around the world to missionaries overseas. Way back in the jungles of Papua New Guinea, and here's, you hear this cassette tape playing, uh, it was saying, has anybody told you we love you today? which is the theme song of uh, First Church at that time when Pastor Earl Lee was here. And I walked into the village and here a young man had a battery cassette player. And he had gotten that tape, I don't know where from, and he was playing it. At its peak, the mailing of these tapes amounted to about 2,300 being sent out weekly. 
Reverend D. Freeborn joined the staff under Pastor Lee to support the youth department of the church. D., as he was known, immediately went to work setting up a singing group called the Christian Minstrels, which was composed of senior high school and junior college age young people. We had two uh, Greyhound buses. And they asked my husband and I to uh, be sponsors. For, and so the song director, D. Freeborn, uh, and uh, his wife uh, rode one bus and then Monroe and I rode into the other. Numerous young people found the Lord as their personal savior under his ministry. The group became so successful that for several summers they charted buses and toured the nation for about four weeks giving concerts in various churches nightly. Continuing the vision of those before him, Dr. H.B. London, Jr. led First Church Ministry into new directions with his vibrant radio ministry, his passion and devotion to world missions, and his assurance to members and newcomers alike that God loved them as if they were the only person to love, and that made them very special people. I can remember very, very vividly the first Sunday that Bev and our family arrived here in Pasadena. It was Mother's Day, 1985. The job we've been given and the chore that is before us and the awesome task to impact this Southern California area will not be easy. But I've got the promise of God from Isaiah 43. I know who you are, Pasadena First Church of the Nazarene. I know your name. I know everybody in that church by name. I redeemed you. I am your Lord. I am your God. And we will make it together. I stood outside that pepper tree and looked at the sanctuary and looked at this awesome building and what the history of this church had meant to the Church of the Nazarene and to this community and the pastors before me. And I have to tell you, I was pretty humbled by the by the occasion. Under the vigorous pastoral ministry of Dr. Stephen Green, First Church of the Nazarene in Pasadena continued to be a beacon of light for those in the San Gabriel Valley seeking truth, compassion, and an environment of encouragement and reflection. Reflection of and on the one who gives us life, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The magnificent story of God found in sacred scripture and there find our story as a part of God's great story. Helping Hands was conceived by a small group of people in the early 1980s. They began the process of developing a program to assist in financial and emotional care for those in crisis. The program has continued through the years, providing meals, rent money, furniture, or a helping hand wherever needed for the young and old. Another ministry to reach out to those in need is the Church in the Park program. In 1999, the church began planning ways to help the homeless in Central Park. They started out one Sunday morning taking donuts and orange juice to the park, hoping to minister to a few needy souls. Four years later, the ministry has grown to include providing a full hot breakfast transported from the church to the park in a trailer to approximately 150 homeless people. The breakfast is followed by a short worship service with the ministry of the word and singing. Pastor Jeff Crosno served as senior pastor of the church from 1999 through 2001. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter begins to preach powerfully, anointed by the Holy Spirit. The 500 gathered around him, bearing silent witness to his presence and the message that he articulates. Dr. Robin Smith was the interim pastor in 2002. To those who fear him from generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost spots. Pastor Jay Allman, the 20th pastor of First Church, began his ministry with us on January 5th, 2003, with the emphasis to seek and save the lost. No one is turned away. One day he's coming back, and when he comes back the next time, he'll come back wearing the crown of glory. 
King of kings and Lord of lords. He will be acknowledged by every person, by every individual. All the world will acknowledge that this is the King. This is Jesus. Within just a few months, God has moved the church forward, enabling us to serve an international community, bringing multi-ethnic groups to worship with us. We have also commissioned a spiritual care ministry with a group of ordained ministers who serve our congregation daily with spiritual care, prayer, and the promises of God's Word. We have also established, among many other new ministries, a brand new ministry of reaching out to families with special needs children who long for a place of worship that brings comfort and encouragement to their family. The primary purpose in all our worship ministries is to lift high the name of Jesus and to glorify God. Our celebration choir and orchestra offer the opportunity for people to join our congregation in worship to Almighty God. As part of our worship ministry, we give special opportunities for small ensembles, trios, mixed quartets, and a cappella groups. We also offer private lessons in voice, drama, bass, piano, woodwinds, drums, percussion, and guitars. The Pasadena primetime people at Paznaz are some of the most outgoing, active, friendliest folks anywhere on the planet. Throughout the year, these delightful adults are planning fantastic events and an amazing variety of activities for men and women ages 55 and above. Our singles ministry is an ever-expanding, exciting collection of men and women from high school graduation throughout all stages of adulthood. Paznaz's student ministries reach out to the various students of the surrounding communities of Pasadena. We equip them through biblical teaching and guide them toward growth in their relationship with Christ. Not only do we have weekly activities here at Paznaz, but we have all kinds of exciting stuff going on in terms of trips and activities. Annual trip to Mammoth Mountain, where we go up and snowboard and learn about God and His creation. We also head over to Catalina Island in the springtime, which is a great time to grow and get to know each other. We end each summer with a great surf camp where we head down to San Onofre State Beach. We spend three days there surfing, hanging out at the beach, eating good food, and getting into God's Word. And then we close each summer with a, just a really neat baptism service. It's been fun uh, seeing all these kids growing up together and, and seeing how everyone's changed. Uh, we've all become people of Christ and, and we're becoming adults now. Paznaz's ministry to children is loving and dynamic. A child's perception of God comes through adults who care for them. Our teachers understand this and offer unconditional love and acceptance to all. Dedicated teachers and assistants realize that this is the perfect time to show children how to interact with each other and their families. We also offer parent educational opportunities. An emphasis on creative and unique worship values through music and the performance arts has also drawn the community to an awareness of the glory of Christ. Challenging and vibrant Christian education for the young, the not so young and the very young at heart is also an important foundation of First Church ministry life. For close to a century, there has been a time to grow and stretch to reach out and receive, to blossom and produce fruit, to become the church that Jesus has called us to be. Um, I've been in this church for almost 65 years, 63 years. Um, my parents brought me here when I was four years old on a September Sunday. And I don't, don't remember that at all, but I remember a lot of things since then because basically this church has been a huge part of my life and my family's life. I first uh, started attending First Church in 1940, and in 1941, uh, my wife and I were married by 
Dr. L.A. Reed. Uh, the, the church uh, at that time was running around 300 people. The, uh, it began to grow gradually, and by the time Pastor Lee left, we were running around 2,300. That was in 1984. I was born in this church. Uh, both, of my, both sets of my grandparents were members of this church. Uh, my mom and dad uh, met in this church. So my dad, 83 years, uh, his entire life spent in this church. And uh, all of my growing up years and, and the great preaching, God has always been so present in this church. The Word has always been proclaimed. The Holy Spirit has always been moving and ministering and touching lives. And uh, the family of this church, the community of Pasadena First Church is precious and has meant so much to my life. They say that uh, the Pasadena Church is going to celebrate their 100th anniversary. Well, I can beat that by one year. I'm going to celebrate my 102nd birthday this year. I'm 101 years old now, and the Lord's been wonderful and given me wonderful health. And uh, so I praise the Lord for all of his blessings. And the Lord has been good to give Pasadena Church so close by and uh, give me a chance to be a part of it. So during all of these years of service, or 34 years of missionary service as missionaries in, 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 for the Church of the Nazarene, 20 years in the Middle East, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Israel, our mission field there, we just have always felt like we belonged here whenever we've come back for furlough. First Church had a tremendous impact on our lives, even way overseas on the mission fields. So it's just been a wonderful time for us to have been a pleasure to be members of the church and to have had the support that we have had over these years. We are a caring community, endeavoring to know Christ and to make Him known in our neighborhood. That's the continuing vision of the First Church family today. A sound teaching ministry, worship, Christian education, community service, and fellowship are all vital ingredients that make up the life of our congregation. This is a safe place to come and seek God and His grace. Just come and see, experience God's love with us.